Thank you, Monsieur Henri uh, Sambri. Well, I'm very honored to address such a distinguished audience. It's really a pleasure for me. Uh, the topic, or the main topic of my presentation is water governance, aiming at better policies and innovation. Well, to deal with this topic, um, addressing such an audience is a little bit redundant because you are fully aware of the importance of water governance. As we say in the Portuguese saying, is like raining in the wet. I mean, adds not much. But water governance is still a little bit of a fuzzy concept with many angles, many viewpoints. So it's always interesting to confront different perspectives, different points of view. The topic of my speech is, uh, I would call it, what is behind the tap? And talking to my friend and colleague, Jaime Aldatista, when I was saying that I was going to talk about what is behind the tap, he told me, well, behind the tip is water services, the water companies. And that's not exactly my point. So I decided, I decided that, in fact, what I'm going to talk is what is behind, behind the tap. Because I will focus on water resources uh, management and governance. And I like very much this picture to put things in place. It comes from a um, World Bank policy paper. As you see, water resources management is like an umbrella covering a lot of sectors. And first and above all, we have water supply and sanitation services because of its social importance, because of its economic importance. But it's a sector among others. Now, why governance is so important? And again, I don't need to demonstrate it for an audience like you, but I want to emphasize that governance means leadership. Governance means social consensus, well-established goals and targets, capacity of implementation. As we all know, water, in fact, is much more than a molecule. And the brilliant presentations that we heard, and I just taken as an example in the Monday morning, Anne Rosling, and uh, yesterday, Deepak Yawali showed in a very eloquent manner how and why water is much more than a molecule. And in fact, I don't know if as an engineer I'm supposed to say this, but in fact it is much more than a technical issue. I always like to emphasize with my students at the engineering school, and precisely because we are at an engineering school, that many problems remain unsolved, not because we lack technological solutions, but rather because there are difficulties and bottlenecks at the social and institution, institutional level that make the required decision process and policy formulation process very complex. So we need a more comprehensive view because often we have the knowledge, the technological solutions, and even the financial means. And these three elements are not sufficient to face the water challenges and solve the problems. We have to focus on society, its actors, the way policies are formulated, how decisions are made. In a nutshell, we have to shift our attention from management to governance. I like very much to quote John Briscoe. Some of you may know him, he's now at, with Harvard University. And uh, he wrote and said in a conference, that water management requires the intelligent deployment of both infrastructure and institutions. And infrastructure here comes as short for investment, infrastructure, technology, all that hard uh, part of the thing. And institutions is much more the social arrangements, the software of it. It's an animal that walks on two legs, Water management, it's an animal that walks on two legs, infrastructure and government. A strange animal indeed, but this is the animal we have to deal with. Talking about the importance of infrastructure, and I like to emphasize this because good news, there, are, there is still room for engineers, and a very important one. This is a graph that impressed me very much, is the variation 
of GDP per capita in the region of Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, with precipitation. We have a lot of precipitation, we have a larger GDP. We have uh, less precipitation, we have less GDP. And why? Because there's a tremendous lack of infrastructure in this region. No storage of water, no reservoirs. So the lack of infrastructure makes the man extremely dependent, too much dependent, more than what is needed from uh, the natural conditions. Okay, why governance is becoming increasingly important? Not only important as we all recognize, but more and more important in uh, our contemporary society. Well, we understand better now than before the water nexus is with food, energy, health, ecosystem protection, and the risk of scarcity and mismatch between supply and demand. During my professional life, I realized that when I talk about water to people, it means different things to different people. If I talk to a, a, someone from the energy sector, someone from the agriculture sector, so, someone from the nature conservation, someone from the utilities, means different things to many uh, different people. But all those things are important and they all must be considered. Such as water supply and sewage treatment, irrigation, water food link, energy, the water energy link, ecosystem services, nature conservation link. In short, water is a common thread of environment and development. Look at this picture because things are not static, are moving and moving fast. Here it is compared the average availability of water per capita in the world in 1950s and the evolution and projection until 2000, let's say, 25. Now, what happens is that in developed countries, now is approximately 59% of the availability per capita when compared with 1950. In humid developing countries, is 22%. In arid developing countries, is 17%. So, 17% of what it was in the middle of last century. So you see the stress that this causes and how it needs to be well managed. So our societies face more natural and man-made risks and, more, and are more aware of the need to face them and respond to them. And we have that famous trilogy, too much, too little, too dirty. The, pro the main problems that causes us gray air when managing water. Other aspects that are important, of course, climate change. And now uh, everybody talks about uh, climate change, and I have no doubt that is a very important thing. But I prefer, and I think it's very important, to consider it mainly as an aggravating factor, because all problems are really there. It simply causes more problems, more natural risks, more floods, more droughts, more problems with ecosystems. On the top of these global threats, we face more stringent conditions uh, nowadays. Crisis forces us to do more with less in terms of investment and operation. In Portugal, we know now very well what this means, to do more with less. New questions on how to share high and long-term investment among users and generations, a very critical point. In economic terms and also in ethical terms, regional disparities and multi-level nature of public powers raise new questions of subsidiarity, of representativeness, of legitimacy. Differences between hydrological and administrative borders create what I like to call a double grid. In some cases, difficult to harmonize. The old story between administrative regions and river basins. Uh, they don't coincide. Both are important for different things. They have to be reconciled and not opposed. The relevance of water resources is fragmented and dispersed in many sectors making it more difficult to implement a horizontal policy that cuts across all. The famous silo approach, everyone dealing with water. Water is a different thing to different people, as I said. 
For many uses, and in many circumstances, water is a natural monopoly with related risks of abuse of dominant position. And last but not least, a tipping point on how we look at water. And that's the resolution number 64 to 92 of 28 July 2010. The General Assembly of the United States recognizes the right to safe and cleaning drinking water and sanitation as a human right that is essential for the full enjoyment of life and all human rights. This has a lot of ethical consequences, but also a lot of economic, uh, social consequences. Just to give a brief idea, I found this uh, figure very interesting. It comes from a World um, Health uh, Agency, um, Luton Haller, and they compare the ratio uh, of benefit versus cost of investing in improvement of access to water and sanitation. And let's compare two regions, an extreme case, a region in Africa, in which each dollar or each euro that you invest in water and sanitation has a return three time, from three to 13 times larger to 42 times larger. And you may say, well, they miss a lot of infrastructure, but if you come to Europe, you have values like four times, 13 times. We still have a lot of things to do. So these uh, show us how this goes beyond, which is already extremely important, an ethical issue. It's also an economic issue. It has value to invest on water as a human right. Now, water governance is, of course, very important to deal with all these matters and deal effectively and efficiently with all these matters. Now, water governance has three components that we need to identify and study carefully. First one, actors and institutions. Second one, governance principles. Third one, performance. Without performance, we cannot improve or we don't know if we are improving. improving. In other words, we cannot manage. Now, if we focus on the, this core of water governance, we may consider uh, three layers. The first layer is institutional layer. Everything dealing with organization, legislation, funding mechanisms to keep things going, making decisions on investments. Then we have a very important relational layer the culture of each system, of each institution, of each society, ethics, cooperation, communication, participation. And then we have a content layer, a kind of software of the system, policy, knowledge, experience, skills, all these are important. Now a highlight on something that I think is very important, the work that is being done now um, at OECD. Uh, starting, well, it's not exactly a starting point because there's a lot of work before, but this is a, 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 a benchmark or is a, an important uh, point. This book on multi-level and wall of government approach uh, with the, the basic idea that coordinating among levels of governance is at the core of consistent water policies and this is an important dimension of integration. And the famous seven gaps proposed by OECD, I'm going through it very quickly, the objective gap, the policy gap, the administrative gap, the capacity gap, the funding gap, the information gap, and the accountability gap. This is almost a, a checklist to see, as it says there, what can go wrong with water governance. So it's a very interesting matrix to analyze different governance systems. Now, a pragmatic approach to governance uh, must be, in fact, good governance. What we want is good governance. And what is good governance? Well, it's the governance that complies with ideas that are accepted by our democratic, free societies that are quite consensual. And there are many suggestions, many principles, many ideas going around. It's still a very, uh, a little bit dusty issue. but. I think that we have to be concerned about three main dimensions. 
effectiveness of good governance, efficiency of good governance, and socially acceptance, social dimensions of good governance. Now, using uh, as a basis what is being proposed by OECD in some documents that are becoming circulating, adapting it a little bit, expanding it a little bit, and clustering, I would point out for these ideas effective institutions with clear allocation of roles and responsibilities, design and implement policies at relevant scale, coordinate water policies with other policies in a coherent manner, enhance capacity across levels of governance, of government and stakeholders. All these make water governance uh, more effective in uh, reaching in complying with good results. Now, in terms of efficiency, a few ideas to promote efficiency. Produce and disclose good and comparable data and information used to improve decision making. Have sound and clear regulatory frameworks for the various uses that promote efficiency and protect uh, end users. Clear rules for cost recovery and policies to minimize operation, and a system that is conducive to innovation that should be seen as a key element of efficiency and competitiveness. Now, when it comes to social, socially accepted principles for water governance, the water governance system should be committed to, promote it, to promoting actively integrity and transparency across policies and institutions. It should engage all stakeholders in policy formulation and decision making. We just had the session presented by Aziza Aknus that is working precisely on these stakeholders, actually in, in this full picture, but with emphasis on the stakeholders issue and participation issues. Guarantee equity, equity in the access to water for various uses with special emphasis on water and sanitation services. Water and sanitation services is one use of water, but specially meaningful in social terms and economical terms. And finally, establish fair criteria for sharing costs among users and among generations. So these are just a few ideas. The basis of this is the OECD suggestions. I messaged it a little bit, expanding, adapted, and clustering in these three categories. And that's basically it. Now, going back to three important messages. First message, water management, going back to Briscoe's sentence, it's an animal that walks on two legs, infrastructure and governance. If you cut one of those legs, legs it stumbles and falls. And this is the kind of thing that you don't want to fall on you. Second message, and I take this from Bernard Baraki. I'm not sure if he's in the room, Oh, yes. Good friend, good colleague. We did a lot of work in governance issues in the past. This is taken from a Roman vase. And it's an inscription, an engraving in a Roman vase some 2,000 years ago. And what do they say in this vase? Eodem flumine utentes in badem nave omnes. I don't think Latin is an official language of this Congress, so I'll translate it into English. All the users of a river are in the same boat. It's a very important idea when it comes to river uh, basin manage. And last but not least, a message for you all. It's worthwhile to work on water because of all of this. And that's it. Thank you very much.